Yo, what's up guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I got the week two meta snapshot for patch 11.3. Couple of changes that I want you guys to keep in mind because I've been trying to climb and discovered a lot of things from last week. They changed a lot this week. So let's get into the changes. Also, shout out to Adventure Ages because they are the sponsor of this video. Um, but we'll get into that later. So brief summary at the top, like it's all Kale. Kale is the best comp by far, but when four people are going for the same thing, you might not want to do that. If you guys checked out my how to get to Grandmasters video, uh, you'll see that I only go Kale when the Kale is presented to me. You can't be chasing Kale just like how you can't be chasing Tail, you know? Uh, so with that in mind, like only go for it when you absolutely need to. Other than that, there are tons of rerolls that you could choose in the beginning of the game. And let's finish up the rest of the tier list. So in the A tier, we have Warlords, Elderwood, Sharpshooter, Nasus, Slayers, Duelist, and Brawler Shivana. So out of all of these, uh, the reroll comps are Sharpshooter, Reroll Nasus, and Duelist, and like Shivana as well, but that one's like a three cost reroll, so it's a little different. Also, I know a lot of people have been saying in the comments like, oh, what is reroll? What is slow roll? What's all that? I'm going to be explaining all this on Sunday, so look out for that if you guys are interested. For the other comps, Warlords and a Mage Elderwood are by far the two top comps because they're very, very strong with Spatula, which apparently is dropping in a lot of my games. I don't know how often you guys are seeing it, but I've noticed in my games, all my friends' games, it's dropping a lot more, and a lot more people are bringing back the Mage Elderwood that we saw from the first patch of the set. Uh, so definitely look out for that. Reroll Diana in the B tier, Vanguard Mystic, Enlightened, Talon, and Assassins, and then C tier, Zed, Dragon Soul, and Reroll Mage. And then I created a new tier because these three, they're like still semi-playable, but Cultus just... Avoid them at all costs. I, I created a new cultist tier for this patch, so uh, too bad for them because, yeah, it's a cool concept, but it's just not working right now. And we'll get into how to play all that, but first, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Adventure Ages. I'm going to show you guys a brand new game that just came out called Adventure Ages. Adventure Age is a game where you are a time traveler and you're trying to go back in time to fix a timeline using your time machine. I downloaded the game right to my phone for free and it's great for when you're in the bathroom, when you're waiting for something or when you're like playing a different game and you are in kind of like a down period. It's a great game for those types of situations because it's the kind of game where you turn it on, do a few turns, log out and come back in a couple minutes or a couple hours later. As you can see here, like the game just came out, so I'm not that far progressed yet. But you tap on your screen, you try to build some gladiators, try to build some chariots, try to build some arenas, and they all build off of each other. So you kind of need one before you're moving on to the other. So what I want you guys to do is go into the description below, click the download link, download the game, try it. Let me know how it goes for you. But essentially, it just takes a couple seconds to download and start playing. So you guys can do that in queue time. So there's really no excuse not to do it. Also, check out the Adventure Ages Instagram page and check out their latest post. It has a competition to win 1,000 gems. But let's get back right to the video. All right, we're back, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. All right, so onto the Executioner Kale comp. You don't have to go for Executioner. It's great to do, but just be sure to balance a bunch of different traits. You could also go two Vanguard with Sejuani and Aatrox for your front line. Uh, maybe go only two Divine. You don't need four Divine. Divine's kind of like a trait that's like... 2 Divine does the same thing as 8 Divine, essentially. If you get, like, 5 Divine Spatulas, like, go ahead, play 8 Divine, but, like, you really don't need it. We have a Kale guide from the Rank 1 North America player right now. He was Rank 1 Global, but I think some other servers went past it, and Rank 1 Global just means you have the most LP in the world. Even though you're not facing each other, it's still, like, a fun stat to look at. But you guys can check that all out here. It's on my website, bunnymuffins.lol, and then full guide here, or you could find it on the homepage. Either works. But yeah, that guide goes into much more detail than what I'm going to do here. So if you really want to learn how to master the comp, check that guide out, and then also check out my Kale to Grandmasters gameplay video, which has four different games. After that, we have the A tier, which is Warlords. And Warlord composition, we have a guide made by the same exact player who's rank 1 NA right now. You guys can check that out later. But to sum it up briefly, Katarina 2-star is your huge carry th throughout stage 3 and stage 4. If you get Warlord Spatula, going for like 9 Warlord with Warlord Chosen is super, super strong too. You pretty much auto win with 3-star Katarina with 9 Warlord. And there are a lot of different options for this composition. You could do like Reroll Nidalee, uh, but we'll get into another Reroll Nidalee comp later, which I think is stronger. You could go for 3-star Akali, 3-star Jarvan, 3-star Vi. Lots of different 3-stars you could go for. Or you could just stay 2-star, go level 9 play a strong legendary unit and round out your comp like that. You could even use things like Trinomir carry if you're like kind of a hipster. So lots of different options there. I'll let you guys be very experimental with the Warlord comp and just know that there are a ton of different options when you play it. So next up we have Mage Elderwood. This comp was terrible in the first week of this patch, but it turned into very, very good in the second week, at least in terms of popularity. And 
let's think about why that might be the case. So Kale is the strongest comp. It's the only S tier comp I have right now. And let's try to think of what counters Kale. It's Assassins and Aurelian Soul because Aurelian Soul just one shots the Kale and then like Kale can't do anything unless she has a Guardian Angel, but not a lot of people build Guardian Angel. Samira is also a good Kale counter because she jumps in and just like executes everything in the back line. However, the best composition for Aurelian Soul right now is the Elderwood composition. If you ever get a spatula early, you just go ahead, build Elderwood Spat, and you can pretty much force the comp from there. Because you don't need perfect item Aurelian Soul if you have Elderwood Spatula and 9 Elderwood. So always keep in mind whenever you're playing TFT, just because something is good in the beginning of a patch doesn't mean it's good. And just because something's bad in the beginning of the patch doesn't mean it's actually bad. It all depends on the meta and what other people are playing. So we also have like a full guide here. So for the top three comps, we coincidentally have three guides made by like some of the best players in the world for those comps. So go ahead, check that out when you guys have time after the video. Sharpshooters, this is like the reroll Nidalee build and two versions I'm going to show you guys. This is the more popular one for Sharpshooter 6 Warlord, which is uh, Nidalee three star with like Jeweled Gauntlet hat and Shoujin is really good. You get like the six Warlord so that she gets even more ability power and health. And then of course four Sharpshooter so that she just kills everything and Zeke's to give her more attack speed. Really, really strong composition. Another version is with Keepers and three Warlord. And this is only if you can't get like six Warlord. Six Warlord version is better, but uh, this version has a nice front line with Sejuani, Aatrox, and then the four Keepers, which is pretty cool. Uh, but to play this comp, none of the comps really matter unless you get three star Nidalee with good items. So you could play anything after you hit those, uh, but you just reroll Nidalee, you never level up. And I've had a lot of people ask me like, oh, what is reroll? And I'll do this on either Saturday or Sunday. I'll post a video about what reroll is and like all the different leveling strategies. So definitely look out for that and subscribe if you want a notification for that if you are new. But most of you guys are subscribed already, so I'll just move on. Uh, next comp, reroll Nasus. This is one of my favorite comps because Nasus just 1v9s. You need Siphoner Chosen Nasus though. You could do it with Divine Chosen Nasus, but it's just really difficult because this comp is pretty contested. I see one or two people go in this comp every single game. So if you are in one of those games where two people are going for it and you are one of them, you better make sure you have the Siphoner Chosen and not the Divine Chosen. Reason behind this is four Siphoner is very critical. And if you don't have Siphoner chosen, you need to rely on hitting Swain. And that is a risk that I'd rather not take. You guys can take the risk. Let me know how it goes. And if you hit it, you have the best late game because the Divine Chosen Nasus has a better late game. But you need the Swain. And I don't want to go 8th place because I just didn't hit a Swain later. So only do this when you have uh, Siphoner chosen on Nasus, at least in like 90% of the cases. I'll still pick up Divine Nasus chosen though, because in the early game, Nasus is a very strong unit. So I'll just play him for early game and then pivot into something else such as Kale. Next up, we have Slayers, which is just an Olaf build. It's a very slept on build. A lot of people are prioritizing Kale. They're prioritizing Shivana. Uh, they're prioritizing every single other comp except for Olaf. And Olaf uses very similar items. You just need to use different components to build the items. So uh, that, that might not have made sense. But like, you need bows for Olaf. You need bows for Kale. You need swords for Zeke's for Kale, but you need swords for Deathblade for Olaf. So you need the same components, but different items. And Olaf makes really, really good use of Runon's Hurricane and Deathblade. And then his third item can either be like Guardian Angel, Dragon Claw is a very interesting choice too. RFC is really good. Um, yeah, so there are tons of different things you could do. So let's say you start off the game with an RFC and you're like, oh, I'm going to go Kale. And then you get an extra bow. You're like, I'm definitely going Kale. But then you see an Olaf. You could just switch to Olaf instead and build a Runons Hurricane and just go from there with the RFC and Runons on Olaf. It's a pretty good build and it uses the same items as Kale in that sense. To complement your Olaf, I like doing the Vanguard build. You don't need the Siphoners, which I have here. They're just kind of just late game units that you could play that are very strong. But if you have like a Morello Namicon, go ahead, throw that on Morgana. Uh, but if you want to do six Slayer, that's an option as well. I don't like it as much because I think the Slayer units kind of are trash without any items. Uh, so if you're only itemizing one person, I don't really like this composition. But if you get a lot of items, such as from Lucky Lantern, go for the six Slayer composition. You could itemize either Trindamir or Darius and Samira and just have a blast from there essentially. So next comp, Duelist. Duelist is just another reroll comp. You go reroll Yasuo, you hit the Yone, you hit the Lee Sin. What I like about this comp compared to other reroll compositions is that for legendary units, you can have two options. Even though you'd really want both of them for super late game, uh, to get like a decent placement such as like third place, you might only need only Yone, for example. But if you want to get first, you need both Yone and Lee Sin, uh, preferably to two-star with good items. 
Uh, after that, we have Brawler Shivana. This is a good comp as well. I, I love this because Shivana is just so cool. Um, she gets like 4,000 health and yeah, she just attacks people and one taps people with runons, like, or two people at a time with runons, I should say. Uh, you could also go like what they call Chinese Nunu, which is with Gunblade, Blue Buff, and like some tank items is really interesting because he just eats any carry in the late game or any tank in the late game. Uh, Set's a really good carry for late game because you just throw all your AP items on him and then he one taps other teams. But the only caveat about this composition is that you need Brawler chosen and it's pretty much unplayable without it. And also Giant Slayer is really popular in the meta right now because all the reroll comps are being played. So people are building Giant Slayer. Warlords are very popular. People are building Giant Slayer. So if you're playing Brawlers, you get completely countered by Giant Slayer. So it's just one of the risks you have to take when going for the comp. But if you get like a chosen Shivana Brawler, like I'm not going to not go Brawlers, even if people have Giant Slayer. Uh, next up, we have Spirit Assassins with Diana. This comp's, I like this comp personally, but it's not like a first place comp. You just play this comp, you get a Gi Diana chosen early, and you're just like, all right, let me just get top four, move on to the next game. It's very hard to win, and it's very hard to get eighth with this comp. So just keep that in mind when you play this. It's still good. Like the average placements are probably above average, but like, don't expect anything better than third whenever you play this composition. I'm not saying it can't happen, but you need a lot more luck compared to other compositions for you to get first place with it. Fabled Vanguard Mystic. Uh, this comp, it's really, really good if you get good Nico items. And I think the best in slot are Guardian Angel, Jeweled Gauntlet, and then Hextech Gunblade. So Guardian Angel is super critical because in the mid game, she'll kill off a lot more units with the Guardian Angel after she gets killed by someone and then throws a, like, a fadeaway ultimate. And then like as she's reviving, it kills certain amount of people. Uh, it's really, really necessary for those types of situations. I've seen this do well without Nico 3 star, but it's something that you really, really need if you want to like have more consistent games. So it's like, it's a little weird. So rerolling for either 3 star Nautilus or 3 star Nico works, um, but you need at least one of them 3 star to really place well. I'm personally not like the biggest fan of this composition. Like I like playing it, but I also just don't think it's very strong. So even though something's fun, if you don't think it's very strong, try not to go for it too often unless you get perfect starts. So I really only go for this if I get like a good Vanguard chosen, lots of Nikos, perfect Nico items, and like lots of Nautiluses. Uh, onto the next comp, Enlightened Talon. This is another good comp into Kale if you get good jumps. And a lot of people, they don't fully surround their Kale either. So if someone's not scouting against you, you could sneak in like a quick Kale kill with the Talon. Uh, Talon's also really good with Giant Slayer in the meta because he kills a lot of the Warlord backlines really quickly because they have uh, boosted health and are in like Giant Slayer range, which is 1750 health. Uh, the only thing you need for this composition is Morello Namicon on Morgana as that's like super, super core and it pretty much infinitely spikes the power of this composition. So even though you need like three Talon items, a Morello on Morgana really, really helps. Uh, On to the next comp, Assassins. I personally love this composition, but it's just so hard to play it because you need 3-star Nidalee and perfect items for Nidalee, and her items don't really fit in anything else. However, I do not put this in the C tier because if you get this comp, you're going to be one-tapping everything with this Akali. It's so strong once you get it online, but it's just very, very hard to. But like, if you do, it's like easy first, you know? <laughs> I think core on Akali is rapid fire cannon and then next best item is infinity edge and then after that you could go either like blue buff or go for quicksilver sash. Both are really really good. Uh, blue buff actually isn't that necessary on Akali anymore even though she has a low mana pool because of the way they changed her mana lockup period. So if you want to learn more about these types of changes check out like my uh, patch notes videos which I release every time a new patch comes out as I go over like all the changes and like give my thoughts on them. But yeah this comp's really hard to execute but if you do get it, it's kind of like a free first place. Uh, C tier, this one's like, I, I always say not to play C tier, but some of these, like, you can play them if you get, like, a very, very, very good star for them. Uh, so Zed, it's just out of the meta right now. Like, why are you playing Zed with these items when you could play Olaf or Kale with these items? Uh, it's just, like, huge difference in power levels. Dragon Soul, it's an Olaf build, but why aren't you playing Slayer Olaf? Not to say not to say Dragon Soul is bad, but like Olaf in a Slayer build is just much stronger. I there's just not much else to say there. Uh, Reroll Brand, I hate this comp. So in the first week of the patch, like this comp was pretty popular. You go like Ludens, you go like Giant Slayer on Brand, you go Spellcrit on Brand. He was one tapping everything. But I play him this week. I see other people playing him this week, and I just never see it place well. I started a game with like Brand three on like stage three. 
And I still got fifth, even though I got Annie three and had like tons of items for everyone. And I got like eighth on it like three different times in the past like two days. This comp sucks. Don't play it. Like, even if you get like tons of brands early, like, it's very difficult to top four this week for some reason with this comp. I, everyone I watch in all my games, I know it's like a smaller sample size, but like, there's just no decision making and there's nothing you could do to like really boost it up that much higher. I would just avoid this comp if I were you guys, but like if you really like brand, like go ahead, try to do it, you know? Uh, and then we have cultists. Yeah, just don't play cultists. Uh, item priority. I change this up a little bit. I think tier is actually the worst item. I know it builds hand of justice, which is a very, very good item. But apart from that, it doesn't really do too much. Like, are you going to build a Ludens? Only if you go brand. Are you going to build a Static Shiv? No. Shoujin, only for like a secondary item later in the game. Uh, Frozen Heart, no. Redemption, only late game. And then Chalice, like, yeah, you could build Chalice, but it's not like that critical. And then Blue Buff, no one builds Blue Buff anymore. So Tier, I think, is actually the worst item in the game. Bow is the best because it's great on Kale, great on Olaf, great on Shibana. Like, all these comps, they need at least one Bow. Bow is kind of like that item where... You really need it until you have it, and then you don't need it anymore. Because if you get like tons of bows, it's completely useless. So like, it's a give or take. Rod, really strong for early game. Sword, necessary for any Slayer comp or any Runons comp. Uh, glove, great for Hand of Justice. Great for like Assassins. Great for like flexibility items. And then Chain, great for Sunfire Cape. Great for Titans Resolve, stuff like that. Lockets early game is good. Guardian Angel for the late game. Belt, good for Sunfire, that's about it. And Zeke's, I guess, is good too. Uh, Negatron, uh, it's just, it's good for the late game, but not good for the early game. So I tried to have my priority, something like this. Uh, onto the item quadrant, I made a couple updates to this. I moved some items around here, so go ahead and check that out. I often don't update this, so I do it like every, once every two weeks instead of every week, but I just updated it this week. So if you guys are wondering what to build, go ahead, check that out on my website. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. So to sum up, we have like, yeah, S tier, it's just Kale, but like, when everyone's going for it, I know it's hard to go for it too. So I'm giving you guys a ton of different options to play other comps if you can't go Kale. But if you get an early Kale, do it because it's really strong. You could stabilize with even a Kale 1 instead of like a Kale 2. Like you don't need 2-star Kale. Whereas like when you're playing like Olaf, for example, you like need Olaf 2-star. If you're playing Talon, you need 2-star Talon. But when you play a Kale comp, you only need 1-star Kale until like stage uh, late stage 5 or stage 6. Uh, ideally, like, you hit it two-star, though, of course, but, like, you don't need need it compared to other compositions. Other than that, like, if you get an early chosen reroll comp, just go ahead, go for it if it's uncontested. Like, what's the worst that can happen? And, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for sticking around for the video sponsorship. I haven't done too many of these, but I do plan on hopefully doing, like, one a month just to support the channel because I am planning on, like, quitting my job really soon, so... Uh, I do need like some income source from somewhere. So I do appreciate those of you who stuck around for that. Um, but apart from that, I will see you guys later.